I did a daily pull and these were the three that popped out. I don't normally pull three for one day readings, but they popped out all at once. So we're going to go ahead and write down the meaning of each one. And then my thoughts after I know what Tara wanted me to know for today and uh, see how I feel about it. I've really been enjoying doing this. I think it's been a positive thing. So I'm trying to make it a daily habit. Okay, so I just, um, I'm working on my tarot uh, today. And I'm journaling the second card's meaning that I pulled, which was the Queen of Cups reversed. And uh, I'm not going to go into detail, but if you know what Queen of Cups is, um, or if you're into tarot, then, then you'll just know. Um, but uh, it just, it's just another reminder of how much I love tarot. And it's just really been speaking to me lately. Um, especially, uh, I've had a lot to do with like, um, I've been doing, uh, working on tarot reading for about a year now, but I took a little break and, um, this weekend I started picking it back up because I've been feeling the need to work a lot on myself. And, uh, this card just reaffirmed exactly what I needed to hear and it's just been really cool. Uh, so I don't know. I know tarot isn't for everyone. Everyone has their own beliefs and that's fine. I'm not pushing it on anybody. I just needed to share the positivity that I'm feeling from my deck and my polls and my reads and um, just how affirming everything is for me and I don't know. I just wanted to share that little bit with you. So, um, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I, you know, I grew up, um, very much in a very Christian household. Um, and I just always had so many questions about like God and religion and like a lot of things just never made sense, but I just always pushed it to the side. And, um, as an adult, I have strayed from being a Christian and, um, I believe in a higher power. I don't necessarily know if I believe in God, um, but I do believe that there is a higher power, that there is more out there. And I just, you know, I, I don't know. I'm still trying to find my way, but tarot has really been speaking to me and, um, this might just be my path. So, We'll see. I know my family probably doesn't like that, but um, I am allowed to not, you know, be forced into having to believe something that I'm not so sure I believe in anymore. Um, I try to live my life as best as I can. I try to just be a good person. Sorry, my bangs are like really not. Sorry, Sorry about that. My bangs are just like annoying. But, um, you know, I'm trying to just live my life as a good person. I do deal with a lot of Christian guilt. Um, I don't know if any of my viewers deal with that at all, but I deal with it a lot. And it's something that I'm working through because I don't feel like it's fair that I should have to feel like that. Um, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. And I'm just sort of trying to figure things out. But <clears throat> regardless, so far my reading today has been pretty cool and the second card is just really speaking to me on a very personal level and um, I just kind of wanted to share that. I didn't want to go into details um, but I did want to share how it's making me feel and uh, just how much I love it. I'm actually almost finished with my journal. I really need another one because I think I might end up finishing my journal today and then I won't have any journaling for my tarot pulls tomorrow. So, uh, we'll see. Maybe we will go get me a new one. But, um, okay, I just wanted to share that. All right, we are getting ready to go to the park. Um, still have some anxiety, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to stop and get some water first, and then we'll be there.
So we're at Wildwood and uh, Kyle had to go to the bathroom so I'm just kind of looking around. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy today. Let's see, window on wildlife. Oh, it does open. I've never been in here before. So it looks like we are in the summer room. You think so? Uh, the tree. Oh, I guess the leaves are. We're doing that thing. Such a tiny baby squirrel. I know. Like a blue jay? Yeah, a blue jay. Yeah. And the cardinal? See Sadie, number five is the manor house. This clearing once held a ballroom and the indoor horse riding arena. The Stranahan's used the site to host parties for their business clients and elite so or blah, blah, for their business clients and elite social circle. The building included an orchestra stand, large fireplaces, and built-in tables. The ballroom overlooked a riding arena where horse shows dazzled the family's guests. In 1974, Metro Parks used funds from a successful grassroots company led by Dr. Bill Mewborn and Mr. John Lusk to purchase a portion of the original Stranley property and renamed it Wildwood Preserve. When Metro Parks acquired the property, the ballroom and riding arena were in such disrepair that they could not be saved. After they burned to the ground, only a few stone blocks remained to mark their location. Can you spot any of the original stone foundation blocks or evergreen trees? 
I'm assuming that's from over here. But we're not going that way. So we'll continue this way. So cool to look out over there. <laughs> oh, this land is very uneven. All right, I'm gonna be out of breath while I read this, but don't mind me. <sighs> clay, clay tennis court slash staff parking lot. Hidden under this parking lot rests a clay tennis court used by the Stranahan family and their guests from the late 1930s through the 1960s. Following a match, workers at the estate smoothed the court surface and re-taped the court lines, preparing it for the next game. The family loved sporting uh, activities and promoted healthy lifestyles and exercise throughout their lives. Frank Stranahan, who grew up at this estate, ran over 100 marathons and was accompanied by, prof by professional golfer and bodybuilder. Oh, he was accompanied by Anne. Accomplished. Okay. Can you find any of the bricks that originally lined the outside of the court? And then... Tennis was among the Stranahan family's many athletic interests. R.A. Stranahan is shown here, top row, third from the left. So this guy. Um, with the tennis club at Harvard University, where he finished a four-year degree in just two and a half years. And then down here is Frank Stranahan doing looks, what looks like a marathon. So this used to be the tennis court. Aww. Okay, this I think up here is the manor house. Not 100%, but I'm pretty sure it is. I've got to go to the bathroom. I'm not sure if they have any bathrooms over here. But, uh, I don't know. We'll go over there soon. I'm more worried about finding myself a bathroom. There's Metro Park Security over there. Gosh, this is so beautiful. We'll go over there soon, too. I just need to use the bathroom. No! Huh. For sure. I just stepped down and it startled me. Yes, yeah, me too. Well, that's cute. Oh, that's really cute. Now this, I believe, is what the manor house is. So beautiful. Guys, I found me some bathrooms. I'm so excited because I got to pee. Yes, I do. Public questions filled up with bayonets. Yeah. I feel stuck. There's this fucker. And this fucker. Okay. Can I have it? swimming pool. Buried under this lawn. 
<laughs> Kyle. Buried under this lawn is a 25 by 75 foot in-ground swimming pool. Installed in 1938. Excuse me. Um, the pool featured both high and low diving boards. In the summer, R.A. and Paige Stranahan hired a swimming instructor to come to the estate to give lessons to their grandchildren, nieces, and nephews. The White Cabana buildings are original to the property and once housed changing rooms, showers, bathrooms, and small kitchenette to serve uh, to serve as guests using the pool. So these are the cabanas. And I use the bathroom. And then the Shipman Garden Etiquette. Stay on pathways or mowed areas. Oh, that's just etiquette. <laughs> so we're gonna go up here. Sorry you get the view of my child. What? <laughs> nothing. What I said nothing. You can watch my video and find out what I said. <laughs> Look at this tree. And all the engraved signature, yeah. like initials. Not gonna lie, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That tree's probably so old. Yeah, I'm sure it is. So cool. What? Oh, there's more initials over there. There's more over there, too? Yeah. Cool. This is a gazebo. This is pretty. Let me take you through here. Chipmunk. It was a chipmunk. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going that way because I just got squished. Oh my god. It's another gazebo back this way. I think I'll go this way. Well, it's very tight knit. Arms in the air. Like you just don't care. I'm going the other way. Nice gazebo. Oh, well, these are beautiful. Is there a reason you got like this close? <laughs> no. And then asked if it was a cactus. <laughs> 
So you wondered if this was a cactus. It is not. Ooh. I'm so sorry. Alright. Well, all you can see is me really just trying to be seen. Oh, that wind is so welcome. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Okay, this is where I just showed you guys, but the restoration of the formal gardens began in 2008 with a generous donation from the Carson family. The formal gardens were designed by famed landscape architect Ellen Biddle Shipman, who also designed gardens for Rockefellers, Fords, and other wealthy entrepreneurs. At one point, over 600 of her gardens dotted the American landscape. Today, only a handful remain in their original condition. This is one of the only shipment gardens open to the public free of charge. Historically, this garden was lit at night with multicolored landscaping lights. Look for the lights that once shone down on the garden from above. I'm sorry about the bird poop on there. Look at this, all these stairs. I don't know if we have time to do this today because I don't know where it ends up, but we might go down and then come back up. We'll see. Someone's sitting down there on the bench, but okay. Huh. I'm curious what those were for. I like the way this looks. It's cool looking. Oh, time to do these stairs again. But this time we're going up. And that's some hard work. Oh, and also, Sadie and I noticed this. What is that? That's like a box of some kind. I thought it was like a shirt or a towel, but it's not. Huh. Oh, look at those. Hey guys, those stairs were rough, but I did it. I made it. I'm at 0.92 miles, and by the time we're done with this, I'll be over a mile, so it's good. And I'm not as weak 
as I was expecting myself to be. So that's good. Let's do this. Let's lose these five, six pounds and get to my first big milestone. Do it. I just wanted to show you one more time the back of the manor house. So beautiful, isn't it? All right, onwards. All right, I'm gonna show you the bridge now. You guys watch me cross this. Got some steps. But this is just so beautiful. You guys can go around. Got a little bit of water flowing down there. The husband and daughter. Just when you look up, it's just so beautiful. We got a Bella. We got a very excited Bella. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, Bella. Bella, baby. Oh, yeah. Hey, sweet girl. Who is he? What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Look at that tail. Look at that tail. Yeah. Bella. Is that, is that Sadie? Is that Sadie who got you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm eating it all Call her. Bella. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a sweet girl. So, I've come to visit my dad's grave. Wow, that butterfly has seen better than this, that's for sure. It was a dragonfly, but now it's gone now. So my mom obviously hasn't passed away yet, but... This is, uh, it. I like to come here and, like, talk to them sometimes. Let them know how my life's going. Such a beautiful sunset. The sky is gorgeous. And the wind is crazy. Alright, so we are, I don't know how well this is filming me, but we are on our way to go eat some Mexican food for dinner. Uh, we are going to Cinco de Mayo, one of my favorite places. So I will show you what we get to eat. Alright, we made it to Cinco's. Big yellow building. I'm so excited. I'm so hungry. It's like almost nine o'clock at night. This is a very late dinner. And I know this isn't on my diet, but Monday's are my cheat day, so I'm allowed. <laughs> I'm 
I don't know what I want to get. There's so much to choose from. This is not focusing. We'll figure it out. We got ourselves a nice water with lemon. Oh. I'm looking through my phone. Water with lemon. She got some water with lemon. And he's got them out to do. So I'm going to get the fajita quesadilla with uh, steak. She's looking at me all the time. It's delicious. Do you know what you want, Sadie? Are you gonna get that number 35? 55. 55? Let's see. Let's find 55. The El Patron special. Yep. Tender slices of grilled steak smothered in poblano peppers, bacon, and Polish sausage, onion, and chorizo topped with melted Mexican cheese. Ooh, that sounds really good. Yeah. I'm thinking about that with push and the thing. Do you know what you want to get? Not yet. Okay. My favorite chips and salsa. Mm. So the dog is they did all the stuff so the guy came in. They came back and half ass back though. And then after that they right, here's mine. That's why I have this is Sadie's that looks so good. <laughs> and that is Kyle's. <laughs> so how is it, Sadie? The best thing that I've ever had in a while. Yeah? Yeah. That's good. No, it was a long time. I'm glad you enjoy it. No. Yeah. How's yours, Kyle? Steak's good. Cheese is good. Good. Look at that cheese. That's cheese for days. This thing is so cute. I didn't even realize this when he got it. <laughs> it's a little girl. He hasn't really been able to dig into it because so of, it's so hot. Yeah. His brother is pretty cool. Sadie is full and we'll have a box for that. And I am stuck and I will have a box for that. That was amazing. I'm so full. I drink my water. Now I'm out of water. Yeah. Delicious! I also love the white here. I don't know. It's just a very cool atmosphere. Look at the lights. Lights, lights, lights. Well, that was yummy. And now it's cold outside. But we're going to go home. And I'm going to end this vlog here. But we had a wonderful day. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing everything. And, uh... Maybe I'll be back tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll be back next week. Bye, guys.